we need to talk. Now you've probably seen this phone making its rounds in the news as a phone made in collaboration with Qualcomm, the company whose Snapdragon chipsets are responsible for powering pretty much every flagship device you're familiar with. In this Decoder episode, my Spanner series here on the channel, I've actually partnered with Qualcomm to tell you a bit about what the Snapdragon phone is and why Qualcomm helped create a phone in the first place. That phone is a special edition device designed by Asus and made for the Snapdragon Insiders community, a global community of now over 2 million Snapdragon enthusiasts who get access to behind the scenes previews, premium experiences, and extra perks. And while it has some impressive features from a DxO Mark camera score of 133, ranking it as the number one smartphone camera in the US and sixth globally, fastest global 5G connectivity, the fastest Wi-Fi 6, 6E connectivity, Qualcomm Quick Charge 5.0, Snapdragon Sound with 24-bit, 96 kilohertz high-res Bluetooth audio, et cetera, et cetera. We're not here to talk about all of that, really, because truth is, regardless of the specs, there's only two reasons that this phone exists. Do you remember the Google Nexus line? Google, maker of the Android operating system, partnered with HTC and began the Nexus lineup of devices. Now, Google, a software company, didn't make this device as a play to sell a bunch of them and generate hardware revenue. They did it more to show OEMs, who are all using their Android software and their various handsets, what Android could do and try to not so subtly nudge manufacturers to kind of step up their game, as it were. Microsoft, makers of the Windows operating system, which various OEMs use on their hardware for laptops, even did something similar with their Surface lineup of in-house designed hardware to also encourage their OEMs. And while Qualcomm isn't trying to start a new line of devices, there is a similarity here. Every year, besides 2020, of course, Myself and other YouTubers have gone to the Qualcomm Snapdragon Summit in Hawaii, where Qualcomm announces their latest chipsets and shows us demos of all the features they can do on reference devices. And every year, we see pretty cool demonstrations showing off the limits of what the chipset can do. But when OEMs make the phones the following year, they don't always use all of the features that the chipset enables. By pushing at least some of the limits of the chipset in their Snapdragon phone, they get to work with an OEM closely, in this case Asus, to pick and choose the features they want in the device. In this way, it sort of shows OEMs what's possible when they use multiple Snapdragon technologies together, but possibly even more importantly for Qualcomm, shows consumers a bit more of what the chipset can do. And the idea is that hopefully that encourages manufacturers to maybe follow suit. And that brings us to the next reason reaching consumers directly. Qualcomm is very much a B2B or business to business company. Their customers are the manufacturers of the devices that the public purchases. They don't sell anything to the public directly. I personally can remember just three years ago, watching Qualcomm finally start to shift from only reaching out to industry analysts to more consumer tech press and YouTubers. And since then watching them every year, further embrace the idea of sharing their stories, how their tech works, and more closer to where the actual users of the products are. So it definitely makes sense for them to start a forum where they can speak directly to the users and even get their feedback, share unique perks with them, like the phone, for example, in the form of the Snapdragon Insiders platform. On top of that, regardless of how many Snapdragon phones they sell, the fact that the phone exists and that Qualcomm helped design it is enough to get the attention of publications. The number of articles that were written about the concept was significant. I imagine the number of people who are now a bit more interested in Qualcomm as a result of that coverage is probably significant too. Qualcomm, even if it doesn't sell directly to consumers, needs consumers to know that they exist, what their products are, and why theirs might be potentially better than their competitors. So that when they're given the choice between a device that has a Snapdragon chipset or not, they choose the one with their chipset. Head to the link below or snapdragoninsiders.com to join the Snapdragon Insider program where they have exclusive content, contests, interviews, merch, and even masterclasses from some of your favorite creators. I was told there might even be a chance that select insiders will get to participate in the next Snapdragon Summit, which again, having been, will be kind of cool. As always though, regardless, thanks for watching.